What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today we're going to go over manual espresso. Why do it, why do people love it, and specifically we're going to be looking at the Flare 58. You may be like me, uh, as a barista, I was never into lever machines. In fact, I was told that they produced inadequate espresso. Um, and I'm curious now why that was, why I was told that uh, back in the day. Uh, but that has been changing over time. I am now, uh, I was sent this by Flair Full, uh, being um, completely open about that. They sent me this to check out, and if I enjoyed it, to do some sort of review on it. And so, um, Spoiler alert, I really do enjoy it and I've been having a lot of fun playing with it. But there have been a lot of trends in the history of espresso and currently we're in a big trend with pressure and flow profiling. And you'll see machines like the Slayer, uh, the Decent Espresso Machine, the GS3, all of these where, where you have a lot of control manipulating the profile. And a lot of that is done with a needle valve uh, where you're able to control and restrict the flow coming out of the machine. But for the most part, most semi-automatic espresso machines have a small pre-infusion, which is just water kind of trickling over the bed at a low pressure or line pressure. And then a slow ramp up to nine bars, nine bars, which is like um, nine uh, times our atmospheric pressure. All right, and so that's kind of the classic shot. You have uh, a slow pre-infusion, and then it goes up to nine bars, and then it levels out at nine bars for the whole duration of the shot. Well, that's not how espresso was always made. Let's take a look back at the history of espresso. So you go back to around 1888, and that's when the first patent was approved for a steam espresso machine. And those machines, they could only pull espresso at about one and a half to two bars of pressure. Now, as you might know, with machines nowadays being at nine bars, that's not quite enough pressure to get that nice crema, the emulsification to create crema. So they were pulling just really thick, dark shots, kind of like an AeroPress. So you fast forward some 60 or so years, and you have the uh, Gaja coming through and creating the first lever machine, kind of a piston type of uh, uh, machine that's based off of torque. It was very manual, obviously. You're using the paddle to pull down, and this allowed eight to nine bars all right, and this is the first time crema was coming out. And when that term was created, crema, they saw it as a special quality when you had a nice machine, uh, the cream of espresso, right? So a lot of people didn't know what was going on with that, but they knew they enjoyed it and it was a beautiful thing to watch. Now then you fast forward another 20 or so years to the 60s and you have the E61 Fahima group had come out. So in that time, people were creating these lever style shots and were able to manipulate the extraction a lot, a lot more than what a steam, the steam one was allowing you to do, which was nothing, one and a half to two bars the whole duration of the shot, and that's if the pressure maintained. Then with that lever, you were able to manipulate the amount of pressure at any given moment during the extraction, all right? Now what's really interesting is if you are a lever fan, a manual pull fan, you'll know this term, but if you're not, you've probably never heard of it, and that is the Fellini shot. All right, so we know Federico Fellini, one of the most uh, famous Italian directors of all time. In uh, his movies, he would always uh, employ workers to play the working positions. So there's one movie where he has a barista in the background, and the barista is using a four-group Gaja lever machine. Now, in it, in the background of one of the scenes, you see the barista do something that, you know, fast forward in the 90s and so, people hadn't really ever seen before, which is they would take the, the lever, pull it down, hold it there for a few seconds, pull back up, and then complete the shot. Now, what this did was effectively pre-infuse that puck. So someone, at some point, figured out with the lever, you could pre-infuse the puck, that water would expand the puck, and would help negate these types of channels. So the Fellini shot was born and observed. Now, of course, it could have been going around before then, and I highly ex uh, expect it was, but the fact of the matter is, is that was, I guess, rediscovered um, through that movie. People saw this in the background, rediscovered that style of shots. Now, I've been looking through, ever since I got this, I've been looking through the Home Barista forum online, and I've been looking at all these conversations about manual espresso, and there are some really intense enthusiasts out there. And that's where I learned about this Fellini shot, and I learned about the history of manual espresso. Something else that is incredibly important 
about manual espresso is the ability to taper off pressure as the shot continues. Now, if you watched my two-part espresso uh, videos, I'll link the first one right above here. If you watch those, you hear me talking about the inverse relationship between coffee and water throughout the duration of a shot. You have a ton of coffee at the beginning, not much water. And as that progresses, the, uh, the relationship flips. Now, we know what blonding is. We see the thinning of the espresso coming out of the portafilter as it goes on, and it, the, the flow rate quickens. So at the beginning, you have the slow drops, maybe 0.5 milliliters per second, and as it keeps going, the milliliters per second increases, right? Well, what you can do with a lever is you can feel the deterioration of that puck, and you can let off of the pressure as you continue, and this will give you a more heightened shot of espresso. My friend John Buckman from Decent Espresso Machines does a little video on this as well, uh, talking about how that nine bar shot is the worst thing to have happened to espresso in the uh, advancement of espresso. Uh, that, that idea of ramping up to nine and maintaining nine bars the rest of the way, it's just going to over extract incredib incredibly quickly, incredibly quickly. It's gonna, oh man, that reminds me of Princess Bride. Mowage, why we all know that movie. It's what brings us together today anyway. All right, so. It's going to uh, increase and it's going to maintain that pressure throughout. So even as that bed is eroding, that nine bars is still going through and it's washing it and washing it. And here's the issue. When there's not much resistance, when that peak puck resistance is gone, right? What's going to happen is that water is going to be blasting through faster and faster. And it's going to be creating more and more channels as you keep going, right? So if we're able to control that end bit of the extraction, you can slow it down and the pressure on that bed is going to be weakened. And then you're able to negate a lot of those potential channels that will form with nine bars. Okay, I know you're like, holy cow, Lance, what is going on today? You're feeling it, you're in the zone. Also your voice is scratchy. Welcome to Arkansas Allergies. Well, here's the deal. I wanna be thorough in these videos. I'm long-winded, you can always rewind and rewatch, but we'll do a quick overview right now. History of manual espresso, 88, there's that patent with the steam boiler, one and a half bars to two bars. You fast forward to Gaja's lever in about the 40s, post-World War II. Then you fast forward to the Fahima in the 60s, right? Then over the years, you have different manipulations of that manual pull bar to create different profiles of espresso, all right? Now, talking specifically about the flare, since this is not hooked up to a boiler like some of the Wapavonis, you are able to, uh, you have to use a kettle with boiling water and fill the chamber. Now, with previous versions of the flare and with most uh, lever machines, you're gonna have to preheat the chamber quite well, right? With, with the ones that aren't connected to a boiler. You have to preheat that chamber really, really intensely. A great thing about this is it comes with an electric aid. This, there are three green dots, one, two, three. These are the different um, um, heat, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Heat stages, I guess. Uh, the intensity of heat that you can choose I always go as hot as possible, but that's going to help us maintain our water temp during the extraction of the espresso. So this is hooked up. I know a lot of you manual enthusiasts may not like that. Let me tell you, uh, it's incredible. Whenever you're at the hottest temp, if you drop water on the metal near the top, it bubbles away. It is gonna maintain your temperature as hot as you want it um, in, this, uh, in this chamber, it, even, even if you take two minutes to pull your shot. So I'm a huge fan of this heating element um, and it's, it's very hot. It's coated in rubber so you don't burn yourself. Then you have, of course, the, the barometer where you're able to see the pressure during the shot. So as you're pulling, you can watch, you can do pre-infusion, you can bloom, you can do different things like that. Um, one downside of this machine is it can only hold 90 milliliters of water. So if you're wanting to do really big Alanger shots, uh, like a one to four ratio with 20 grams, you can't obviously, uh, yes, 90 mils, fit in there, but the puck absorbs a lot of that, right? So the biggest yield you can get is about 55 grams. So you can do a 15, 16 gram dose and you know pull a nice long shot, but you are restricted by the chamber's uh, volume. So real quick, I want to break down some of these words I've been using uh, in case you're unfamiliar. So I've said the word bloom and pre-infusion. These are different ways of expanding the puck to help uh, promote further even extraction, right? So you can bloom on the flare, you can bloom on a decent espresso machine. You cannot bloom on most machines because the solenoid valve is being enacted and pressure is coming out onto the puck. Once you have pressure, it's not really a bloom anymore. You wanna have just that line pressure, just water being dispensed for it to be considered really a bloom, all right? So you can bloom on this by simply pulling out the hook, pulling this out, and when your coffee is in your portafilter and tamped, 
you pour water in here and you can let it sit for 30 seconds. Water trickles out and I will show that right now. If I pour water into here, it'll come straight out. You see that? So this is the water that will be trickling over your bed and it will be infusing into the grounds to your packed portafil uh, to your packed puck and travel down soaking all of the grounds uh, with little to no pressure, just gravity kind of falling on top. Now, uh, then you can enact pre-infusion. What I like to do personally is I like to slowly pull it up to about three bars of pressure and I'll let that sit for a while as it's taking, uh, as it's uh, beginning to extract. And James Hoffman recently put out a short video about pre-infusion. He, he theorizes about eight to 10% of your coffee is gonna be extracted during that. I'm not sure about those numbers, but um, I trust James. So about eight to 10% or so is going to be pulling out during that pre-infusion process around that three bar. I like to hold that for a while and then go up to my peak resistance at about nine bars and then slowly taper off. And now this shot takes about a minute, a minute and a half, but it's going to give you an incredibly high extraction, a really sweet espresso. And it's something that you can get on a $500 machine that you normally wouldn't be able to get until you spend you know, a few grand. So for those espresso snobs out there that really enjoy playing with your shots, I would highly recommend getting something like this, uh, like the Flare 58 I'm, I'm really enjoying, uh, because you're able to, um, to manipulate the, the extraction throughout the whole process. Now another benefit of this is that you will be able to, even if you have an improper grind size, you can play with the pressure to get around an improper grind size. So you can feel the intensity. So if you're pulling down and it's really, really, really fine and you're not able to pull down very hard, just make a longer pre-infusion until it loosens up and then you can continue. Or if it's really easy to get through it, hit your peak pressure early and slow down the shot for the rest of the duration of the, of the espresso. So using uh, something that's manual, you're able to make changes throughout your espresso extraction. Whereas in a semi-automatic or something that you uh, have to program, you won't be able to change anything once the dose is in there. So you'll be able to salvage a lot of shots using, a program, uh, or using this, manual, uh, this manual lever that you wouldn't be able to do with other machines. All right. Let's take a quick look just at the different components of the machine. I've already shown you this barometer. So when this goes in, it has a little O-ring valve to suction it, right? When you put this in and you start to pull down, it reads the pressure. So you can follow along with what you're doing. You have the brew chamber here, which is what is preheating. You put the water inside until it's full. If it's 90 mils, you don't have to use all of it. And in fact, you can't use all of it in a single pull, which can be a downside. Uh, there's only a certain amount you can pull. Then you have to go up and finish the water through the puck into a separate cup. Um, so that's kind of a downside. Um, something else that's interesting is if I hold this up, you'll see it. The screen, perhaps you can or can't see it, the screen underneath, right here, the screen is smaller than the 58 millimeter portafilter. So you have to use something on top of your puck to evenly disperse the water. Now that's an easy fix with what they send with uh, the, their mesh filter. I've been loving this. You can use an air press filter as well. I found much better results using the mesh filter on top. And what this allows is when the water hits it, it spreads evenly throughout that mesh filter to give you a more even extraction. So even though the screen is a little bit smaller than the head of the puck, you'll, you'll be able to dispense it with this mesh screen. All right, and so we have the preheating element, we've got our uh, barometer, we've got the hook, we've got the lever system. Now let's take a look at actually pulling a shot. Um, oh, and uh, by the way, the drip tray underneath fits an Akaya Lunar perfectly. So if you have a Lunar, and I highly recommend if you're getting this to get a Lunar, um, it fits perfectly right underneath. Now, actually, I'm gonna go to that next. Uh, the Akaya Lunar, or the Pixel, or uh, the Pearl, all of those can be connected to this app called SE, let me find it, whoops. Called SE Profiler. When you open it, it has a little tutorial on how to use it, but we're gonna go ahead and just go to a recent shot I did, boom. So on the scales, it will connect via Bluetooth to this and it can measure your flow rate. So how many milliliters a second the espresso is coming out. And ideally, um, you'll be able to play around with that flow rate. If you wanna have a constant flow rate throughout, that means you would be slowly tapering off, right? And so it'll help you understand how intensely and how softly to change that, um, to ch change that, um, the pressure on the machine, all right? So 
We've got that app connected to our scale. We have our uh, chamber preheated. Now let's go ahead and grind into our pour filter. All right, so I've prepared my espresso. Now, with, uh, with this coffee, I purposely didn't dial it in because I want to show you how throughout the shot I can feel what it's doing and make changes to create a good espresso regardless of how perfectly it's dialed in. Obviously, you'll wanna dial in your espresso. I just wanna show you how you'll be able to make changes throughout the shot in order to make a, a, a good espresso even if it's not dialed in well. I put my mesh filter in, I tamped it on top, and I'm gonna load it in. All right, I'm gonna get my app ready pull it out, get it all good to go. All right, so I've got my app ready. I've got this all, ready, uh, all good to go. I've got my cup, whoops, that is water in it. I've got my cup underneath and the scale is teared. And now my water is up to boiling. And here we go. All right, so as you can see, if you see from that side angle, it started to bubble up because right when it hit that metal that's been preheating, it started to evaporate rapidly because how hot we have it in there. Now I'm at, I'm currently at about 26 seconds, so at 30, I'm gonna bring it up to three bars, and here we go. So as you see from the side, I brought it up to three bars. And the first drop started to come out slowly, and I'm at, I'm gonna start going to nine. I'm gonna go up to peak pressure, and I'm gonna hold it here for a bit, and then as I see the speed increasing, I'm at 1.3, 1.4 grams a second, I'm gonna slow it down. I just want to maintain 1.5 grams a second for the duration of the flow. Oh, went up to 1.6, 1.5, 1.6, slow it down even more, 1.4, and we are at our 50 gram mark right now. Let me pull up to create a vacuum, stop the shot, boom. Let me switch this out because it will leak a little bit as I said. And you'll see from the side, there's still water in the chamber that comes out that you'll need to discard. All right, so if you can see this. All right, so as you can see, we have a really nice shot of espresso. There's obviously modeling going on, um, which you know is just some of those fines coming out. But there you go, pulled a really nice espresso without even dialing in. I was just feeling how it was pulling. And as you can see from my graph, the flow was increasing and then I tried to keep it steady even as the puck was eroding. So I was slowing up the pressure as I continued the shot, trying to keep it as even as possible, right at 1.5 grams per second until the very end where I cut it off. So with this, even if you're not truly but dialed in, you're gonna be able to play around and not waste shots, if that makes sense. So now I have a shot that wasn't dialed in, but it pulled in a really good time frame because I was able to manipulate the extraction as the puck was eroding, all right? So to answer the question, why manual espresso? I hope that answered it. <laughs> You have a lot of control over the process. You're able to, especially with this where the brew chamber isn't connected to a boiler, you're able to boil your own water or bring it up to whatever temperature you're wanting, dump it in. The preheated chamber is gonna maintain the temperature throughout the bloom and throughout that pre-infusion. So you're not losing heat left and right. It's really well insulated as well. Um, and then throughout the extraction, you're able to slowly taper off so that you can pull back the pressure to abstain from a lot of those channels. And now something else that I have read is during the extraction, if you see channels occurring, you can stop just for a millisecond and continue and that will collapse the channel speculatively. I'm not sure about that. I'm sure it might work because as you're pushing, the pressure's coming in really hard and it's compacting the puck. If you pull, if you stop it all, the puck will expand maybe, potentially a little bit. And then you breathe push it down and it can squash the channel that may have been formed, if that makes sense. So there's a lot of uh, um, control, obviously, you have full control over what's going on throughout the extraction that you otherwise wouldn't have in any other machines other than maybe the decent espresso machine, which obviously you can do whatever you want on that. But for people who have a more tight budget, this uh, retails at around five, 520. If you get this, and a Kyle, a Kyle Lunar scale, and then you download the app, you're gonna have almost as much control. Uh, you just won't have the um, predictability because the these other ones you can program something. This one you're using your arm. So it's a little bit of effort. But the last thing I wanna talk about is there is an attachment you can get for the flare and for other espresso machines as well that goes where the barometer is and it can connect to Bluetooth to that app uh, to which I referred. It's made by that company. 
and it will let, allow you to also track the pressure throughout the shot in that graph. So it will give you similar graphs to what the Decent Espresso machine gives you. Uh, again, the only thing is you, you can't really automate it, so it's gonna be guesswork throughout. And all right, in conclusion, which I think I already gave a conclusio, but we're going again because this was a long video and I know y'all have been wanting it, so here it is. In conclusion, um, I genuinely like the flare. Uh, the only issues that I really see with it is obviously the screen's a little small, so you always have to use that mesh filter. Then again, that's not necessarily a bad thing because when you're done, it's the group head's clean. You don't really even have to clean it. You just need to knock out the screen and knock the puck out, and it's clean. Um, you can obviously put an air press filter on the bottom. Uh, you can check out Jonathan Gagne's uh, research on that as, as how it affects hydraulic pressure. Um, but it is a little wobbly. It's a little shaky uh, when you're when you're pulling. So far, I've not had any issues. Uh, the other thing is, and this isn't that this isn't really a, a negative, but um, because the flare is level, when you're pushing at a high torque, it will bend the frame slightly. So it will look like you're extracting out the front of the puck, which isn't true. It's just unlevel, uneven when you're pushing down. So that middle, uh, the middle drips, just kind of lean forward. So there's a little leaning, not necessarily from channeling. It's impossible to not get that unless you put something under the front of the machine to, um, to take into account the bend, the torque in the body. All right. That is my look at the Flare 58. That is my uh, um, introduction into manual espresso for you all if you've not had it. If you are getting one of these in, give it a try. Try some of those tips that I told you. I'll do some more videos on the Flare 58 in the coming weeks with different styles of pulling with how to dial in. Um, and again, my next video will be talking about how to do the Weiss distribution technique, which will immediately up your home game regardless of your machine. So uh, anticipate for that. Uh, it's gonna be a good video. In the meantime, if you saw this and you were confused by a lot of the jargon, check out my espresso videos. It's a really great introduction into um, advanced espresso, but I do kind of simplify things in those two 30 minute videos. Um, and then you'll be able to come back to this, you'll watch it all, you'll hear bloom and pre-infusion and you'll be like, oh, that's what it means. Um, anyway, thank you so much for bearing with me on this uh, long video. Uh, please, if you uh, enjoyed the video, give it a like, give it a subscribe. If I said uh too many times for your liking, you know, roast me in the comments. Um, and yeah, I have a Patreon I just started. We have some dope uh, conversations on Discord. And for some of the higher tiers, we do a live Zoom each month. And the first one's coming this Saturday. This will be irrelevant in future weeks if you're watching it. But um, yeah, it's been a fun time. So thanks for the support and cheers.